SpaceX says no to limits as Elon continuously innovates technology to bring humans deeper into space. This is why it's so ahead of the competition that will never catch up. For example, while other spacecraft manufacturers are still struggling to follow SpaceX's lead in reusable rockets, SpaceX is already on to what is really an insane idea, mid-air rocket catching using the Mechazilla launch tower. The technology of catching rockets mid-air, as ridiculous as it sounds, but Mechazilla is gradually proving its potential for success. What Mechazilla just did with Starship is shocking more than you might think. Stay tuned as we dive into this episode of Alpha Tech. Recently, there has been musing that SpaceX has become an accidental monopoly in the space launch business. Elon Musk has dominated the launching of things and even people into space. Indeed, SpaceX has become the go-to rocket company for a variety of services. The SpaceX Crew Dragon is the sole commercial American ride for astronauts to low Earth orbit. The Falcon 9 is the cheapest and most reliable way any customer has to put anything into Earth orbit. SpaceX is also deploying the Starlink communication system, designed to provide voice, text, and internet directly from space throughout the world. Let's not forget Starship, the monster rocket now under development at the SpaceX Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. When the Starship is operational, it will be able to launch immense payloads into low Earth orbit, land people and cargo on the moon, and fulfill Elon's dream of establishing a settlement on Mars. These things will happen, provided that government regulators authorize more test flights. That's not the only reason we can be confident they'll succeed. The ability to achieve this ambitious goal depends on their development. We might think that producing more and testing more will prove their progress. Yes, that's not wrong, but it's not enough. The crucial aspect is not how many tests they conduct, but how much they have upgraded through those tests. The first orbital launch on April 20th ended in a spectacular explosion. But to assess accumulation and identify issues, Starship must prove itself in the second launch. Meanwhile, as the next launch hasn't happened yet, what we look at to see SpaceX's progress is the activities at Starbase. An outstanding activity bringing us excitement and highlighting SpaceX's learning process in the Starship program is the stacking of two rocket stages together. Wait, do you think it's a simple thing? A small step? Well, let me show you that it is indeed a small but crucial step for the Starship program. Until now, the concept of stacking our Starship has always been a slow, careful process involving the arms of the launch tower to ensure the combination is correct and perfect. There were even cases where human intervention was needed in the stacking process for greater accuracy. However, things have changed in the last six months, only for Ship 25 and Booster 9. SpaceX has stacked them four times as of today. This number is nearly equal to the total number of stacking SpaceX performed previously for Ship 20B4 and Ship 24B7, which was six times in total. Not only that, but the stacking time has also seen significant development. We no longer have to wait nearly two hours to witness a complete 120-meter-high starship. In just one-third of that time, SpaceX has been able to quickly complete this process. Here's a fantastic time-lapse video showing each necessary step to achieve proper alignment for the stacking of Starship 25 and Booster 9. It's insane how the crane and connectors can move it in such small increments. Immediately afterwards, within a few hours, SpaceX promptly conducted a fuel test for the complete Starship bringing it closer to the wet dress rehearsal test. This is a huge change compared to six months ago, demonstrating SpaceX's rapid learning and development, and the process will be a crucial point to serve Elon's goal of continuous launches in the future. Why is that? The upper stage of Starship has a fuel tank large enough to place objects into a stable orbit and return. If it intends to carry its payload to Mars, the Moon, or a Lagrange point, where we have the greatest need for a vehicle capable of transporting loads of hundreds of tons, it needs to consume more fuel. You would want to complete the job as quickly as possible if you have anything living there because the more supplies they need to get through the refueling process, the more fuel they have to take to know where they're going. The only current way we have to provide it is with the amount of fuel being used by oil tankers launched from the same base that Starship has done. In theory, they could assemble all of them at once and move them out one pad at a time, but that means they'll need more than a dozen stages below and upper stages to support each upper stage of Starship, and the potential cost advantage of the system will largely evaporate. The ideal cost configuration would have to be one Starship, one oil taker, and one booster, with a ladder tube flying multiple times a day. If successful, it could bring rocket launch costs to unprecedented lows. 
However, it won't be efficient if the overall turnaround time for checks, stacking, and fueling to the oil tanker takes too long. While currently, there's not much that can be done to reduce the time needed for checks and fueling. That's why the increasing frequency of stacking over time will help SpaceX optimize a part of that time to achieve the most efficient performance for Starship. In fact, the success of this rapid stacking cannot be discussed without acknowledging the significant contribution of the enormous launch tower lovingly called Mechazilla. It's Elon Musk's quirky creation since he announced catching the Starship with chopsticks. Honestly, many of us still can't fully grasp Elon's intentions when building Mechazilla as it looks unlike anything built before. Not to keep you waiting, recent revelations about it have been disclosed in Walter Isaacson's best-selling biography on Elon Musk. The story of the chopsticks had begun eight months earlier at the end of 2020 when the SpaceX team was discussing the landing legs being planned for Starship. Musk's guiding principle was rapid reusability, which he often declared was the holy grail for making humans a spacefaring civilization. In other words, rockets should be like airplanes. They should take off, land, and then take off again as soon as possible. The Falcon 9 had become the world's only rapid reusable rocket. The video feeds of this fiery yet gentle landing still made Musk leap from his chair. Nevertheless, he was not enamored with the landing legs being planned for Starship's booster. They added weight, thus cutting the size of the payloads the booster could lift. Why don't we try to use the tower to catch it, he asked. He was referring to the tower that holds the rocket on the launch pad. Musk had already come up with the idea of using that tower to stack the rocket. It had a set of arms that could pick up the first stage booster, place it on the launch mount, then pick up the second stage spacecraft and place it atop the booster. Now, he was suggesting that these arms could also be used to catch the booster when it returned to Earth. It was a wild idea, and there was a lot of consternation in the room. If the booster comes back down to the tower and crashes into it, you can't launch the next rocket for a long time, Bill Riley says. But we agreed to study different ways to do it. A few weeks later, just after Christmas 2020, the team gathered a brainstorm. Most engineers argued against trying to use the tower to catch the booster. The stacking arms were already dangerously complex. After more than an hour of argument, a consensus was forming to stick with the old idea of putting landing legs on the booster. But Stephen Harlow, the vehicle engineering director, kept arguing for the more audacious approach. We have this tower, so why not try to use it? After another hour of debate, Musk stepped in. Harlow, you're on board with this plan, he said, so why don't you be in charge of it? As soon as he made this decision, Musk switched into silly humor mode. He began laughing about the scene in The Karate Kid where the karate master, Mr. Miyagi, uses a pair of chopsticks to catch a fly. The tower arms, Musk said, would be called the chopsticks, and he dubbed the whole tower Mechazilla. He celebrated with a tweet. We're going to try and catch the booster with the launch tower arm. When asked by a follower why he didn't just use the landing legs, Musk responded, legs would certainly work, but the best part is no part. On a hot Wednesday afternoon in late July 2021, the final segment of Mechazilla with the movable chopstick arms was put in place at the Boca Chica launch site. When his team showed him an animation of the device, Musk got excited. Kick ass, he shouted. The viewership on this one is going to be huge. He found a two-minute clip from the Karate Kid and tweeted it out from his iPhone. SpaceX will try to catch the largest ever flying object with robot chopsticks, he said. Success is not guaranteed, but excitement is. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.